What if the next energy revolution isn't solar, wind, or fusion, but a reactor that can't melt down, runs on thorium, and produces almost no nuclear waste? That future is no longer theoretical. In the heart of China's Gobi Desert, scientists have just fired up the world's first fully operational thorium molten salt reactor and refueled it while it was still running. This video unpacks how they pulled it off, why it changes everything we know about nuclear power, and what it means for the global energy race. Thorium has long been regarded as this sleeping giant of nuclear energy, more abundant, potentially safer, and vastly underutilized compared to uranium. What makes China's breakthrough so remarkable is that they've finally awakened this giant by turning theory into reality. Operating the world's first fully functional thorium molten salt reactor, and more importantly, refueling it while online. So why thorium? For starters, it's about three to four times more abundant in Earth's crust than uranium. That alone makes it a strategic resource for any nation seeking long-term energy independence. But what truly sets thorium apart isn't just availability. It's its inherent safety and clean energy profile. When used in a molten salt reactor, thorium produces significantly less long-lived radioactive waste and it can't sustain a nuclear weapons program. It doesn't generate plutonium, 239, or other easily weaponized isotopes in the same way traditional uranium reactors do. China's choice to build their experimental reactor in the Gobi Desert was also strategic. The arid location offered both safety and isolation, ideal for early-stage nuclear experiments. The facility, known as TMSR LF1, is modest in size, producing 2 megawatts of thermal power. But its significance is far larger than its output. It's a proof of concept for a much more scalable solution, one that could reshape global energy dynamics. Unlike conventional reactors that use water under extreme pressure, this reactor circulates molten salt as both a coolant and fuel carrier. That makes it meltdown proof by design. Even if power is lost, the fuel naturally solidifies, preventing catastrophic release. This isn't just a clean energy development, it's an energy revolution in slow motion. And it was driven by patience. Chief scientist Su Hongjie described the process as slow, methodical, and deliberate, like the tortoise in Aesop's fable. While the U.S. once led in this research in the 1960s, it abandoned the path. China, in contrast, quietly studied the declassified American work, recreated their experiments, and pushed forward for over a decade until it worked. Creating the first operational thorium molten salt reactor wasn't a matter of simply following a blueprint. It was about pushing the limits of materials science, thermodynamics, and nuclear engineering all at once. From the very beginning, the Chinese team took on one of the most technically ambitious projects in energy development. The roots of this project stretch back to 2009, when the Chinese Academy of Sciences assigned physicist Su Hongjie a clear but daunting mission, bring thorium reactor technology out of theory and into the real world. Over the next two years, the team grew from a few dozen researchers to more than 400 engineers and scientists working under extreme conditions. Construction of the TMSR, LF-1 reactor in Michin County, Gansu Province, began in 2018. The challenges were immense. Molten salt reactors require entirely new materials that can withstand prolonged exposure to extremely high temperatures, up to 700 degrees Celsius, without corroding or degrading. No off-the-shelf solution existed. Engineers had to invent new alloys, develop new insulation systems, and write entirely new safety protocols. Another major hurdle was building the first system capable of in-core thorium fuel reloading, a feature that eliminates downtime and raises operational efficiency dramatically. In traditional uranium-based reactors, fuel must be swapped out during shutdowns, which are expensive and time-consuming. In the TMSR, LF-1 reactor, the team designed a sealed fuel cycle that allows for continuous refueling while the reactor is running, something never before achieved at this scale. The entire system operates at atmospheric pressure, making it much safer than conventional reactors. There's no need for giant containment domes because the fuel isn't under extreme pressure, and if anything goes wrong, the molten salt simply solidifies, locking radioactive material in place. The team's success was incremental. In October 2023, the reactor achieved criticality, meaning it could sustain a nuclear chain reaction. 
By June 2024, it reached full power operation. Then in October 2024, they accomplished the fuel reload milestone, earning the title of the first operational thorium molten salt reactor in the world. Team members reportedly worked over 300 days a year, many even sleeping on site. Sue described the experience as a national cause rather than a job. This was science in service of history. With China's operational thorium reactor now up and running, the global energy equation has shifted, especially in the nuclear domain. This isn't just about technology. It's about energy security, geopolitical leverage, and climate leadership. The implications are enormous, and they're not hypothetical anymore. Let's start with the energy angle. Global power grids are under pressure like never before. From Europe's post-Ukraine war crisis to rapid industrial growth in Africa and Southeast Asia, the world needs more electricity, and it needs it to be clean, cheap, and stable. Renewables like solar and wind are vital, but they suffer from intermittency. That's where thorium steps in, not as a replacement, but as the backbone of a 24-7 clean energy infrastructure. China's success means they now control a functioning technology that produces virtually no high-level nuclear waste, cannot melt down, and uses a fuel that's incredibly abundant. The Bayan Obo mine alone in Inner Mongolia is believed to contain enough thorium to power China for tens of thousands of years. This not only gives China a clean energy edge, it gives it export potential. Already, Chinese state-owned enterprises have begun developing thorium-powered container ship designs, a potential game-changer for decarbonizing global shipping. They've also hinted at building modular thorium reactors for export to developing countries looking for small, safe, and sustainable energy systems. For countries with existing CANDU or PHWR reactors, like India, Romania, Canada, and South Korea. The thorium path is already partially paved, but China's approach bypasses these older systems entirely, building from scratch with modern design principles. Meanwhile, the U.S. is lagging. Despite bipartisan support for nuclear innovation and projects like anneal fuel development, a thorium halo hybrid developed by Clean Core Thorium Energy, the U.S. reactors capable of using this fuel are limited in number. Only about 50 of the world's 440 reactors can currently accept these fuels without modification. China's first mover status means they will now set industry benchmarks, safety protocols, and supply chains. This could influence how global regulatory bodies, from the IAEA to national nuclear authorities, adopt or adapt future standards for thorium systems. With the successful operation and online refueling of a thorium molten salt reactor, China has redrawn the roadmap for nuclear energy. In a world desperate for clean, stable, and safe power sources, this achievement doesn't just answer long-standing engineering challenges, it redefines what's possible. It signals that we're entering a new nuclear era, one where meltdowns are obsolete, long-term waste is dramatically reduced, and the energy to power entire civilizations could lie just beneath our feet in thorium-rich rock. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.